Hello. Um, so in this lecture, we want to continue with um, our illustration of the ADM approach using a very simple stencil, which is you know uh, six nodes in the in the um, x direction and five in the, in the y. Um, so we we showed that. Um, we can actually compute for u tilde, all right, when we sweep in the horizontal direction. Um, you get a system of tridiagonal matrices which you can solve. Uh, in this next step, we want to look at the second step of the ADI method, where now that we know u tilde, we plug it in here, and then we solve finally for uh, our u at our next time level n plus one. Okay. So just as I did for this here, we can expand it using. Uh, Predest L Y and L X. When you expand them uh, and rearrange times, uh, you will get you get you get this uh, this equation here. And so on the right hand side we have our unknowns at time level n plus one. Here you tell us unknown from our previous um, computation, which we demonstrated by sweeping in the horizontal direction. Okay. Um, this gamma y gamma x and alpha x alpha y are known, okay? So these are known. So, so that's the equation. Um, now, I want to show that if you continue to sweep in the horizontal, for instance, if you take j, and just as we did for the first step, you look for different values of i, and plug them into uh, this equation here. The resultant system you get will be this, okay? The right-hand side is known, that is fine. But on the right, on the left hand side, what you realize is, of course, these ones are you know, uh, boundary values, okay, which, which are known. But these terms here, these 10 are unknown. You have five equations, you have about 10 unknowns, okay? Um, and uh, moreover, this, this right hand side can, cannot be written as a tri diagonal matrix. So that is one of the um, things you have to be mindful of. And that is why the method is called ADI, alternating direction implicit. So in the second step, you don't need to, uh, you don't have to sweep in the horizontal. If you do that, you get, you get this um, incorrect system that you can solve, okay? So um, the most appropriate thing to do in this step is that using this equation now, in the second step, what you do is you sweep in the vertical direction. You take a value of i and then look for a system for different values of j. And so th that is what we do here. If you take i is 1, for instance, uh, plug in n is 0 in the equation, you get a system for different values of j. When j is 1, when j is 2, when j is 3, you get the system of equations. The right-hand side is known. You get boundary values uh, 1, 0, and then 1, 2, which, which you can get from um, what we did in the previous lecture. And so now it's easy that, to see that you can put this uh, in a tri-diagonal matrix equation. I haven't done that, but you can easily write this as a matrix, like the matrix we got previously, okay? So in this case, it's important that you sweep in the vertical. You take a value of i, and then look for a system for different values of uh, j. When, when you have computed for this, you move to the next, where you take i is two, compute for different values of get a system for different values of j, all right? And then all the way until when i is i. So that is how you do it for um, in the second step, all right? This just shows that you can do for i is two for different values of j, and the resulting system, again, is tri-diagonal, which you can solve for finally the values of u, and then you do that until when i is i for this simple stencil, okay? So basically, that is, uh, that is an illustration or a demonstration of uh, the ADI method, okay, uh, which, which you can use to solve the uh, second order um, heat equation, or the heat equation in 2D, if you like. Okay, so this is an exercise that um, I'll ask you guys to do, all right? You have the heat equation in 2D, A is just 1. Uh, I want you to take delta T to be 0 0.25, this is zero. Rectangular grid x between 0 and 3, y lies between 0 and 2. Okay? And then this is the initial condition is given by this function here. Okay? This is a boundary condition for x at x equals 0, 
um, the value of u is zero. When x is at the last boundary, when x is three, you get uh, this function here. And then these are boundary conditions for y. When y is zero, all right, you get zero. And when y is two, you get uh, you get zero. Okay. They are chosen. The boundary conditions are chosen such that they are really consistent with this, and you don't have any jumps at the corners, right? Um, so, using the ADI method uh, for the stencil that I just demonstrated, all right, I want you to use the same stencil: um, six nodes in the X and then five in the in the vertical to um, to compute both the intermediate solution that is the u tilde as well as the u itself okay so for when n is zero that is the first step and then when you when you plug in n is equal to one all right so for this case you're going to have the intermediate solution as well as the final u okay and then when you move on to the next stage you're going to put n equals one and that will also give you an inter intermediate um, step solution u tilde as well as the final solution for when n is 1. And I actually want you to display your results in a tabular form, all right, like this. So, so for each case, for when n is 0, you will get uh, the u tilde, okay, and then you need to fill a table like this for the u tilde. And then in the next step, you are going to have the final u, and then you have to fill a table like this. Okay, that is for i. And then when you go to, when n is 1, you are going to have two tables again, one for the u tilde and the other for the final u solution, all right? So these are, you know, your i's, when i is 0 all the way to 6, as well as when j is 0 to 5, okay? So that will be uh, an exercise I will set up for you, okay? So uh, that will be it for um, the parabolic equation in 2D, all right? Uh, so once we are done with this, we'll move on to um, the next the next uh, step. I think we'll be looking at hyperbolic equations also. Okay. So all the best.